Our objective in this lesson is to solve problems involving radical expressions. First one, it has been a routine for Sir Jason to go to church every afternoon after work. Find the shortest distance from his work going to the church. Sir Jason is a teacher who goes to church every day to give thanks. We are asked to determine the shortest distance going to the church from the school where he works. Will he pass the park first then go to the church? Or go home first before going to the church? Either way, he will walk 7 meters. 3 plus 4 is 7. 4 plus 3 is 7. Is there another way to go to the church in a shorter distance? Actually, there is. We learn from geometry that the shortest distance between two points is a straight line. So, we'll go straight to the church from the school. Of course, considering that this way is possible, we'll label the distance D. From this figure, since the two pairs of opposite sides are parallel, then this is a right angle. Therefore, we can use the Pythagorean theorem, c squared is equal to a squared plus b squared. c here is the longest distance in a triangle, so you may choose the upper part or the lower part. Our c here is the distance d. Then, we may choose any sides for a or b. I'll choose 3 for a and 4 for b. 3 squared is equal to 9 and 4 squared is equal to 16. 9 plus 16 is 25. To solve for D, we have to extract the square root on both sides. So the index 2 here and the exponent will cancel out. And then the square root of 25 is positive and negative 5. Since there is no negative distance, we are going to choose positive 5. So the shortest distance from the school going to the church is 5 meters. Next one. Rexon bought a TV from his 13th month. The size of the TV is the diagonal length of the TV screen. The aspect ratio of the width to the height of TV screens is 4 is to 3. Determine the size of the TV Rexon bought if the area of the TV is 1,500 inches squared. So let us draw the free body diagram of the TV. And its area is 1,500 inches squared. The size of the TV is the diagonal length of the TV screen. Let us label it D. We do not know the measure of the width as well as the measure of the height, but we were given the ratio of the width to the height, which is 4 is to 3. Therefore, the width is equal to 4 thirds of the height. Let us recall the area of a rectangle, and that is the product of two consecutive sides. So the area of this rectangle is width times the height. The area is 1,500, the width is 4 thirds of h, and h remains h. Applying cross-multiplication, 3 times 1,500 is 4,500, h times h is h squared, times 4 is 4h squared. Let us divide both sides by 4. 4,500 divided by 4 is 1,125. 4h squared divided by 4 is simply h squared. Let us take the square root of both sides to solve for h. 1,125 can be expressed as 225 times 5. In here, the index 2 and the exponent 2 will just cancel out, so this will be equal to h. Now, the square root of 225 is 15, so 15 is square root of 5 is equal to h. We now have the value for h. Let us use the working formula for w, and let us substitute 15 is square root of 5 for h. So this will be 4 thirds times 15 is square root of 5. 15 divided by 3 is 5, and 5 times 4 is equal to 20. So w is 20 is square root of 5. Let us continue. Since this is a rectangle, therefore this is a right angle. So we can use again the Pythagorean theorem, c squared is equal to a squared plus b squared. Our c here is the longest distance in the triangle, so that would be d. And we can use any value for a and b. So for a, I'll choose 20 is square root of 5. And for b, I'll choose 15 is square root of 5. 20 is squared is 400. Is square root of 5 is squared is 5. 
400 times 5 is 2,000. 15 squared is 225. A square root of 5 squared is 5. So 225 times 5 is 1,125. 2,000 plus 1,125 is 3,125. To solve for D, let us extract the square roots on both sides. The index here too and the exponent will just cancel out. Then 3,125 can be expressed as 625 times 5. And the square root of 625 is 25. So D is equal to 25 is square root of 5. A square root of 5 is 2.2 .2, and 2.2 .2 times 25 is 55. So 55 inches is the size of the TV Rexon bought from his 13-month pay. Let us have another one. Currently, the spherical tank in your place can hold 500,000 liters of water. Due to the increase in the number of residents in your area, the homeowners are planning to purchase a larger tank. What will be the new volume of the tank if the new radius is 1 meter wider than the old tank? So the volume of a spherical tank is 4 thirds phi r cube. The volume of the old tank is given, that is 500,000, so let us substitute that in this formula. And then applying cross multiplication, 500,000 times 3 is 1,500,000. And then here will be 4 pi r cubed. Let us divide both sides by 4 pi. So 4 pi and 4 pi will cancel here. And what will remain is just r cubed. Computing this in a calculator, 1,500,000 divided by 4 pi is equal to 119,366.21. To solve for the value of r, let us extract the cube root on both sides. So the index 3 here and the exponent will just cancel out, so this will just be r. Using a calculator, the answer to cube root of 190,366.21 is 49.24. So this is the radius of the old tank. But since they are planning to buy a new one, and the new radius is 1 meter wider than the old, so the new radius is 49.24 plus 1. That would be 50.24 meters. Now let us use again the formula for the volume, and let us substitute the value of the new radius for R here. And computing this, it will give us 531,174.85 liters. So this will be the capacity of the new tank whose radius is 1 meter wider than the old tank. Another one, the kinetic energy measured in joules is equal to 1 half mv squared, where m is the mass measured in kilograms and v is the velocity measured in meters per second. What is the velocity of a bowling ball that Dave threw if its kinetic energy is 6 joules and has a mass of 5 kg? So let us rewrite the formula. The kinetic energy is given and that is 6. The mass is also given and that is 5. So let us substitute those in this formula. Cross multiplication, 6 times 2 is equal to 12. And then we have here 5v squared. Let us divide both sides by 5, so this will be 12 over 5. And then divided by 5, this will be v squared. To solve for v, let us extract the square root on both sides. We have to rationalize the denominator, so let us multiply both numerator and denominator by a square root of 5. 12 times 5 is 60, so this will be a square root of 60. A square root of 5 times a square root of 5 is 5. 60 can be expressed as 4 times 15. Copy 5. A square root of 4 is 2. Therefore, V is equal to 2. A square root of 15 over 5 meter per second. This is the velocity of the bowling ball that Dave threw that has 6 joules of kinetic energy and a mass of 5 kilograms. Another one. The period, which is the time to complete one cycle of a simple pendulum, is 2 pi times the square root of L over G, where L is the length of the string and G is the acceleration due to gravity. 
g is equal to 9.8 meter per second squared or 32 feet per second squared. What is the length of the string if it takes 2 seconds to complete one cycle? Let us rewrite the formula. Since we are looking for L, let us square both sides. So this will be t squared. And then here, 2 is squared is equal to 4. Pi is squared is equal to pi squared. And then the index 2 here and the exponent 2 will just cancel out. So times L over G. And then cross multiplication. So G times T squared. And then here is 4 pi squared L. Since we want to solve for the value of L, let us divide both sides by 4 pi squared. So 4 pi squared will cancel out here. And so we have L is equal to gt squared over 4 pi squared. For g, we may use 9.8 meter per second squared or 32 feet per second squared. I'll just use 32. And then t is 2 seconds. So I'll substitute those. And then 2 squared is equal to 4. So that will cancel out with 4 here. So 32 over pi squared. And this is 3.24 feet. So this is the length of the string that took 2 seconds to complete one cycle. Let us have one more. The distance between two points is given by this formula. Determine the distance between point A, 5, negative 9, and point B, 2, negative 3. So let us copy the formula. Now to avoid confusions, let us label our points. So this will be x sub 1, y sub 1. And this one is x sub 2, y sub 2. So let us substitute. x sub 2 is 2 minus x sub 1 is 5. So 2 minus 5 copy plus y sub 2 is negative 3 minus y sub 1 is negative 9. Negative negative will become positive. 2 minus 5 is negative 3. Negative 3 plus 9 is positive 6. Negative 3 squared is 9. 6 squared is 36. 9 plus 36 is 45. And 45 is 9 times 5. Square root of 9 is 3, so d is equal to 3 square root of 5 units. This is the distance between point A to point B. Now it is time to check your understanding. Pause this video for more time. Let us answer. Let us rewrite the formula. It says here how long, so it means we are looking for time. So first, let us eliminate this 2 here by multiplying both sides by 2. So this will be 2h, and then 2 here will cancel out. So we have gt squared. Since we are solving for t, let us divide both sides by g. So g and g will cancel out. Therefore, we have t squared is equal to 2h over g. To solve for t, let us extract the square root of both sides. The index 2 and the exponent 2 will cancel out. So we have t is equal to square root of 2h over g. Let us substitute the value of h that is 490 and g is 9.8. And this will give us 10 seconds. So this is the time it will take before Lance's cell phone reach the ground. Gets?